Underwood. As you know, Obama's given away the store, debased the military to the point where no one even knows if it can fight a war anymore. There's no leadership. I mean, you take away... Remember the old cowboy and Indian movies that you watched as a kid? Well, I don't think they made them in your day if you're younger than me. When I was a kid, there were cowboy and Indian movies. And it was well known that if you, if you kill the chief, the Indians couldn't fight. That's what Obama has done to the military. He's put in an incompetent moron at every level. And including the Defense Department itself, I never saw anything like it. The guy couldn't finish a sentence without almost crying. That's the new defense secretary. But nevertheless, we have a very dangerous situation that's emerged. I'm sure Bernie Sanders would be a great commander-in-chief. Nothing like an anti-American socialist communist spitter, draft dodger to be commander-in-chief. Yes, sir! I could just see the Marines, the Special Forces, saluting Bernie Sanders. That would be the end of the road. But, but don't laugh. This country is so sick that I could see a wild card like that freak becoming president very much along the lines of how Hollande, a very similar weakling coward, became the premier of France. Same thing, socialist. Drove all people of money crazy. They wanted to leave the country. In fact, Depardieu became a Russian citizen. Not that he's a prize. Depardieu is some prize. Hates America. Let him stay in Russia where he belongs. But anyway, you want to see a, a real serious problem? Chinese space weapons revealed. I know. Oh, go to sleep now. You know, go to sleep. Bill Gertz is a defense reporter for Washington Times. And he says China has now such advanced space weapons programs that they can destroy or jam U.S. satellites and limit American combat operations around the world. I will not read you the article. They can knock our satellites out of the air at lower and higher orbits. Well, they're under, under development to do that. They're developing co-orbital anti-satellite weapons. On and on and on. You know, I linked it up on michaelsavage.com. You say, well, what can you do about it? Well, for one, you can get rid of an anti-American, anti-military, anti-family, anti-church administration. You can do that. You could fire them. Couldn't you do that? The enemy is everywhere. The people don't know which way to turn. The news is so awful. Crime is out of control. De Blasio is a psychopath. He takes down a picture of George Washington, puts up a picture of a revolutionary, and no one says a word. Obama got rid of the, uh, the bust of Winston Churchill. No one said a word. Right in front of your eyes, your country has been snatched out from under your eyes and they're continuing to do it. No one says a word. And if you dare say a word, you're a right-wing racist. Well, you know what? They can go you nowhere. Get in their faces. Don't let them steal your country from you. Take it back from them. The news is so horrible. Let me read you the headlines in case you think I'm ad-libbing just to get through the show. Here, France's top weatherman sparks storm over book questioning climate change. In other words, he saw reality. He criticized the world's top climate change liars. He said climate investigation is, is filled with misleading data, so the French are in shock. Chicago police, illegal alien rape sleeping woman. Isn't that part of their lifestyle? Uh, next story. Sanctuary cities on the rise, releasing more than 9,000 criminals in the U.S. illegally. Isn't that the object? Is to intimidate the population? Next story. Murdered woman hanging from fence mistaken for Halloween decoration. Isn't that normal in Chicago? Next story. FBI director says Islamic State is recruiting 24 hours a day in all 50 states. Isn't that the object? I mean, what is he telling us this for? Why would the FBI director put out a story like that? He says hundreds of people are consuming social media efforts to either draw them overseas to join the extremists or if you can't come, kill where you are, FBI director Comey said. Uh, then why aren't you stopping it, sir? Why aren't you hacking into these individuals and arresting them, sir. What are you doing this for? You're letting them recruit? Why are they not stopped from recruiting? The biggest stupidity I've ever seen is that if an American citizen leaves America to join a terrorist group, why are they allowed back in? Why is their citizenship not, not immediately withdrawn? Because we're not a sane nation and we have an enemy within who wants them back here. And what else are you going to conclude? Any other conclusion? Either the presidency is filled with morons or they want them back here. Is there any other conclusion you can come to? No. The biggest question is, is Merkel insane or being blackmailed? I don't understand how this woman, who was a, a centrist, center-right, is not only admitting in 
Hundreds of thousands of Syrian Muslims who are rioting in the streets of Germany, they're suing the government for more welfare. I swear to God. I found the article. I said, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. They're suing Germany for not giving them more welfare and faster in Germany. Demanding it. Most of them are from Chechnya, no less, by the way. Just what we need here more. more. It's unbelievable to me. The whole West has lost its mind, and it's, you know what. Are we running out of time already in this stop set? Yeah, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Life goes on. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. And um, we just keep praying and hoping for the best. And we try our best to put the right people in power, and oh, and it never works out. It's usually the worst and the dumbest rise to the highest places in the land. That's been my experience in most of my life. If I look back politically, who can I actually say was a president that I respected? When I was a boy, Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. Naturally, I looked up to him. He was a war hero. I didn't even have to question who he was. I knew he led the Allied invasion, the Allied invasion on D-Day. That's all I knew. I loved the man. I looked up to him. I felt safe in America. That's all I knew about politics as a kid. And I would say that what I felt as a kid for politics is what the average American feels for politics today. Do you actually, do you actually trust or feel safe with that person in office? And the answer with Obama is a resounding no. Nobody trusts him. Nobody feels safe with him. He's a snake. And nothing that he does is reliable. It's all a lie. So that, that's the fact of the matter. Now, now you go back to Bush. Another snake. Another snake used the bumblingness to, to cover up his, his work for the CFR. The Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergs, whoever you want to call them. Those who really control the money in the world pick the president. So Bush was another one. Uh, at least he took the war to the enemy. Unfortunately, people would say he picked the wrong enemy. And as I wrote in a book in 2006, it could be the greatest military blunder in American history, and it was. I said, because if this goes wrong in Iraq... What we're going to see is a, is a new Persia emerge, okay? And it did go wrong, and it, it, it was the unintended consequences. And so that was that. So now let's go back before him. Who was president before him? Why, it was Bill Clinton. Oh, oh, that's ripe for a little discussion. But we'll skip right over Clinton. Let's go back to before Clinton. Who was president before him? Well, at some point, we're going to come back to Ronald Reagan, for whom... Uh, Reagan, for many people, was God. He was not God for me. I didn't think he was that great a president. There are those who were, again, glorifying him and turning him into more than a man. He was a good man up to a certain point, but he was not that great. And frankly, he did a lot of bad things. Not everything he did was so great, okay? Would I choose him today? Yes, 100%. Was he better than that whole slew of people I just mentioned? 100%. But was he perfect? No, he was just a man. So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is let's not ask too much of our politicians because at the end of the day, they're only people, number one. They're not better than us. Many of them are not even as good as us. They're just what they are. And the word politician inherently has within it the word deceiver or liar. There's a very famous painting that I love to go and see at the museum here in San Francisco. And I had it on my website years ago. It is set in colonial America where a group of farmers are sitting around a cracker barrel, turned over, big barrel, like a wine barrel, a cracker barrel, and then there's a, a you know, they're wearing farmer clothes. They look, they look scruffy. And then in the room, in this little room with six or eight farmers, there's a guy well-dressed with a nice suit on talking to them with great rhetoric, and the painting is called The Politician. <laughs> you know, so what does that say to you? What do you expect from these people? What do you actually expect from these people? Do you expect them to tell you the truth? They're put in power by bigger powers. Look at a guy like Rubio. You know he's a non-entity. I'm not saying he's a bad person. Don't get me wrong. Probably a decent guy. But you know he's a non-entity. He's a zero. He's not known for anything. Has he invented anything? Has he built a business? Has he built a hospital? Has he performed an operation? He's not known for anything. So who is picking him? Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire Republican. And Larry Ellison, a billionaire Democrat. So ask yourself a question. Why would a billionaire Democrat and a billionaire Republican pick Rubio? They both want massive amounts of cheap labor. It's a, they don't care beyond profit. 
If you own a hotel chain, you want cheap labor forever. You don't care what it does to America. If you have a software company and you're a software giant, you want to make sure your costs are as low as possible. You don't care how you devastate the American tech worker. You don't care. If you're Mark Zuckerberg, you don't care how many billions you have. There's not enough money in the world for a man like you. By the way, Government Zero has gone to number one under politics on Amazon before its publication next Tuesday. It's already They did it. I didn't complain to them. And they talked about Al Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem during World War II and how he collaborated with Hitler and how the Muslims wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East to exterminate the Jews. Now, this should be a wake up call to all of the liberals who hate Israel, the liars, many of whom are Jewish, by the way, who say that they're not anti Semitic because they're Jewish themselves, but they're anti Zionist. What these fools should know is that Al Husseini wanted to exterminate the Jews in the Middle East before Israel was even created. And I'm talking about 1940, 41, 42. There was no Israel. There was no Israel. There was no state of Israel. Al Husseini, a Muslim, worked with Hitler, got the plans for the gas chambers at the Chau, and wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East and round up all the Jews in every country in the Middle East and exterminate them. Did you know that? They didn't teach you that at Harvard? All of you geniuses on the Middle East who are oh so preposterously in favor of the poor oppressed Palestinians. You didn't know that about their history, did you? You don't know that their end goal is extermination. You know nothing about this. You also don't know the equation of the Middle East. We keep hearing that the Jews kicked the Palestinians off their own land and that the Palestinians are the underdog, and how can you not identify with the underdog, and the Jews are evil imperialists who stole the land. I've heard it all. I've analyzed it all. And I'm sure there are many cases of that being true in the Middle East, in, in Israel, by the way, per se. Uh, but there are many cases of that not being true. In many cases, the Arabs gladly sold garbage land to the Jews, garbage, useless, rocky hillsides that they could not cultivate for, for thousands of years that the Jews made flour and grew crops on. And what you also don't know, but that they didn't teach you at Yale or Harvard, is that at the same time that Israel was created, the Muslims went on a war path in northern Africa. Libya, Libya ring a bell, Algeria. Look at the countries of North Africa. Jewish people had lived there for a thousand years. Guess what your friends, the Muslims, did to the Jews? They stole their land and kicked them out of the country. 700,000 Jews were thrown out of northern Africa. Jews had lived there for 500 years, rather. 500 years. Think about 500 years. Their land was stolen, property stolen, bank accounts stolen, and they were driven out. And where did the Jews go? They went to Israel. It was the only place on earth that would take them. So the next time you get up and smoke your, your liberal lies, get the whole picture right here on the Savage Nation. So now having said that, let's move on to what's happening in America. You're being pushed aside by the social engineers called Al Hussein Obama. Al Hussein Obama is doing to this country a damage that you'll never understand in your lifetime. You'll never understand the damage Al Hussein is doing and why he's doing it. Whether it's a military that's now broken, whether it's the leadership of the military that's been decapitated or weapon systems that are almost antiquated, the man has almost reduced us to a second-class nation in terms of a military. You don't know any of this because you haven't been told about this from the potheads and the, uh, and the crack addicts in the media. The crackheads who don't look like the crackheads in the media, believe me, they are the ones who are responsible for what's happening because the crackheads in the media are supposed to be the estate, the fourth estate. That keeps the government in check. But aside from Michael Savage and a very few others in the media, there is no fourth estate. It's the fifth column. The fifth column marching alongside the liberal fascists who are stamping on us. Not stamping out the grapes of wrath, by the way, but literally growing the poison seeds. Poison seeds. Some schmuck with uh, tattoos with a fist has just been elected in Canada. He's the son of a moron named Trudeau. Trudeau was a playboy, an all-around useless idiot who destroyed Canada with his liberalism and stupidity. 
another golden boy, ruined Canada. Now all of a sudden, the son is, is now elected. Why was he elected? Because he's got a good body and he's got tattoos. So now 